as with every year I've been making videos for this beloved game, I'm here to weigh in what I think is coming to Sea of Thieves in 2023 and what is already confirmed, if not heavily teased. I had some spot on predictions last year, if I do say so myself, and some wildly inaccurate ones, so go and watch my 2022 predictions after this one. I'll start with the likely stuff and then you can stay until later for the wilder predictions. Oh, and we will be talking about A Pirate's Life 2 in this one. So let's get started with the things that are confirmed or all but confirmed. With the latest orb streams, Rare have confirmed a few things that are coming early this year. Essentially, the first two covered the plot of the next two adventures, where we'll continue to search for a cure to the skeleton curse and eventually discover its ancient origins. The third teaser confirmed pirate guilds were coming to the game. With this information, we can comfortably assume this will be in Season 9, which is slated for launch in March 2023. In what form exactly they will be is unknown. We can safely say they will include new social options for crews, new progression for the original four trading companies, and new cosmetics. They will somewhat play into the story unfolding in Adventures 2. Mike Chapman recently confirmed seasons will be more intertwined with adventures going forward. Season 8's gameplay was justified as an escalation to the ongoing conflict, and Season 9 looks to be the fallout of Season 8's escalation. We know that clothing presets and outfit saving will be coming to the game, and 2023 seems like a good time to have this. This was confirmed again by Mike Chapman when we had him on the official, unofficial Sea of Thieves podcast. Flameheart will finally be making a physical appearance after five years of waiting, thanks to the efforts of the Reaper's Bones during the return of the Damned Adventure. While he's chilling in his coffin for another few months, it would make sense for him to appear in March ahead of Season 9. Finally, the next mystery is slated for release in Season 8, which looks to be related to Athena's fortune having a traitor in their midst. This again was teased in the Orb teasers last month. Based on the teasers seemingly being in chronological order, it could suggest that this isn't the mystery and an adventure arc in Season 9, or could just hint the teasers aren't in chronological order at all. Furthermore, we have some more stuff which is likely to arrive in 2023. Mike, once again, confirmed on Twitter they've had several plans to introduce jewellery in each of the seasons, but it hasn't quite made the cut yet. 2023 seems like a good time for this to happen. On a more sombre note, seasons look to have been changed to 4 months each now, something I am not a fan of. Season 6 was a whopping 5 months, Season 7 was 4 months, and Season 8 is also 4 months long. With seasons not getting shorter even after the recovery of 2022's delays, it's very likely we'll only get 3 large content updates this year. How do you all feel about this? Let me know down below. Adventures are here to stay as well. With the quality and presentation not really ramping up last year, it'll be interesting to see what Rare does with them this year. They were very promising at the start of 2022, but they could go either way this year. I reckon the cadence will be slightly increased to always be every month, but would prefer less but permanent adventures with four seasons instead. But let's move on to the big one. Will A Pirate's Life Part 2 be coming this year? It could really go either way, but this could be me in denial. There are lots of hints to this being in the pipeline. Chiefly, Jack Sparrow promised he would return to the Sea of Thieves at the end of A Pirate's Life. The first one took two years to develop, so this summer would mark two years since the previous outing. There are a bunch of lore similarities that are slowly hinting towards a Captain Hook implementation as well. There were the hints in the tall tales, but certain visual similarities can be found with the tree in the Reaper's hideout with the one from Peter Pan. The fairy dust on the tree could be the thing that powers the treasure from the first set of tall tales. Others have pointed out that some of the dialogue in the orb teasers is making reference to the lines from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, suggesting this confirms it. The cynic in me suggests these are just references and callbacks. On the other hand, how would new tall tales fit in with the adventure, cadence and structure? We'd be chugging along with an adventure each month up until July when season 10 comes out, then have the flame out storyline stop again for a pirate's life, or be intertwined with it. Then what? Do we get a break from adventures, or do we get adventures in season 10? I can't see Rare making a Pirate's Life 2 temporary story missions either, so if they were adventures, they would have to be replayable. Then, when you look at it this way, a Pirate's Life 2 looks really unlikely if it appears as seasonal content. That's why it could go either way. Do you guys think it's coming this year? Please let me know down in the comments. I will say it though, it's very, very likely that the captain will get a reveal this year. I'm thinking of the second half of the year after Arc 5, which should end in around May. Speaking of arcs, it's already confirmed we'll have more community decisions this year. I predict these will be in June and October again, just to follow the pattern of last year. I have no idea what these could be, but personally, I would like to fight over another island, just to determine its fate again. Although, I hope it's not just Reapers versus Athena for each fight, but I do think it will go that way. Maybe one of the decisions will come from the orb tease about the Reapers wanting the Sword of Souls. I think that might pertain to some other content entirely though. 
I reckon that payoff will be a Legend of the Veil vale style voyage that can be completed by Reapers and Athena's Fortune, with two paths depending on which side you choose to purchase the voyage from. This would bring in new commendations and cosmetics, as well as an increase to either faction's level caps. I believe Rare has started to move away from Athena's Fortune being the only endgame faction, simply because the Reaper's Bones got similar support in Season 8. It would also make sense as Reapers seem to be absent from the Pirate Guilds coming in Season 9. Therefore, the Reaper's Bones will be PvP and PvE focused, just like Athena's Fortune, with the Guardians and Servants filling in that PvP niche. Reapers lost their PvP theme a while ago when players realised it was just a gold faction anyway. Furthermore, this would actually tie in with Flameheart coming back, as he'd be simply too powerful if he was up and actively fighting Athena's fortune. Captain Flameheart will probably be tied with this door, hence the chains and the burning blade motif on the door itself. Could this voyage even be a return to the shores of gold? Who knows. Now we're getting further out and more speculative, Season 8 might be getting some support towards the end of the year. It would be the right time as most core players would be well into their rewards and they don't want the content to die out. As of now, the hideouts are largely useless outside of them being social spaces and places to get your curses. I guess the Reaper's Lair has the Bonesmith as well. However, the Chroniclers are there to tell you how the war is going, but just provide vague statements about it. The same issue lies with Gloria and Humorous. They just act as a way to open your emissary menu. I would hazard a guess and say both these features will open up, with events in the case of the Chroniclers and leaderboards in the case of the emissary folks. Maybe there will be more skeleton cosmetics, but I'm making a video on how many issues that has caused soon, and you don't want to miss that one. In turn then, that pretty much outlines what we're getting as major content. The good news is, we'll be at loads of other fixes and quality of life changes. As of Season 8, Rare has changed tact and started to release fixes on the fly. They're quicker to respond and tweak things, along with jumping on community feedback. This year, we already know Season 8 is getting some matchmaking improvements in the coming weeks. These changes will follow the cadence that the Supply and Blunderbomb fixes set. To round off, here's some things that I don't really expect this year. First of all, a map expansion, Sea of the Damned or otherwise. I just don't think it's happening. Tooltales probably won't return unless it's a pirate's life. Adventures are pretty much here to stay. PvE servers. These will never be happening and if they ever do, progression will be turned off. 2023 is not the year where it will change, so stop asking for it. Hunter's Call is not getting an update. Ever. Well, maybe not ever, but definitely not in 2023. Arena is not coming back, it's getting a bit like the PvE servers on this one. And one last thing, I don't expect them to have a roadmap like last year, since it did result in it being broken due to the Season 7 delays. I would be shocked if Rare did this again. I just thought I'd end this on a really positive and optimistic note. Anyway, 2023 is looking quite exciting and I'm cautiously optimistic following Season 8 saving 2022's mishaps. What do you want to see come to Sea of Thieves in 2023? Please let me know down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Sunday will be when we dive into the problems the skeleton curses cause. It's going to be my favourite video for a while and I'm sure you guys will love it as well. You're also going to be quite sad at the end of it. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.